Well, hello and welcome to the show. I'm so glad you've joined us again this week. We're gonna be talking about trailer loading today. I've got Kiri with me and her Mustang horse Rumpelstiltskin, and we're having some trouble getting them in the trailer. So we're gonna deal with that coming up right here on Discovering the Horseman Within. Gonna take a ride on one true Kiri, typically what kind of problems do you have when you try to get old Rumple into the trailer? Um, he usually pulls back or he'll step his first two feet in and he'll just stand there and will not move. He'll like make his neck go as far as possible. Okay. And then he'll just start pulling back and back and back. Okay, perfect. Well, why don't you go ahead and load him for me and let me see what happens. Okay. Good boy. Come on. Come on. Oh. Easy. Now, Kiri hauled this horse here, so it's not like he's not been in the trailer. The real issue is he knows that he doesn't have to get in all the time. That's really the issue. He's learned how to find a release in backing away from the trailer. It's not that he's scared to death of the trailer. It's, it's really a lack of communication between the two. So that's what we're gonna deal with. You watch him, he almost walked in, and now he's just kind of saying no, right? He's in the habit of saying no, and that's the answer he's most comfortable with, is no. All right? When he rushes back out. All right, Kiri, that's enough. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and have you uh, step over there with, uh, with the rest of the apprentices, but I'm gonna bring you back in a little bit. All right. Okay, so when you watch, you can see, if we give Kiri 25 minutes, she's going to get Rumpel up into the trailer. That is gonna happen. Uh, he's not, we've had lots worse horses to trailer load, but what he's doing is he's in the habit of saying no. He's a nice horse, you watch him, he wants to be friendly, he's kinda big on wanting to stick his nose into you and rub on you, but he's found the way out of the pressure. So what I'm gonna do is ignore the trailer for a minute. I'm not even gonna go near the trailer. I'm gonna take my little stick here, reach back here, and ask him to come forward. And that's all I'm gonna ask him to do, is just move his feet forward. Trailer loading is actually just advanced level leading. That's all it is. If you deal with trailer loading as if it's just leading, and leading well, then you're going to discover your horse gets over his trailer loading problem quickly, right? So I wanna make sure I can move him all directions. I wanna back him up, I wanna bring him forward. The cue you use should never be any heavier than it needs to be, right? You should have a cue and an enforcer. The cue should never become the enforcer, and the enforcer should never be the cue. In other words, I don't want to lead him to the back of the trailer and whack him on the butt, and that's the cue to get in. Instead, I want to send the horse into the trailer and then use the enforcer to move him forward. When I get this horse to where I'm content that he will move forward from anywhere, all right, he's done our groundwork, he understands how to get away from my body, he understands the stick means move, right? And we're establishing authority by moving his feet. And that's all that I wanna do. Now I'm gonna take him back to the trailer. And right there when I feel him say no, I'm gonna move his feet. The moment you feel this horse say no, when you feel that stiffness in the halter, instantly change what you're doing and move his feet. I'm gonna ask him forward and back to the trailer. This is, don't get, in, don't get ahead of me, right? Now let go of that lead rope. Don't pressure his head in the trailer. No pressure on his head, pressure from behind. Now, move those feet forward. I'm gonna move those feet forward up here and we're not going back to the trailer now for a little while. He's pretty comfortable slamming his body into me and getting just a little too close. So we're gonna work back here away from the trailer until he starts to think maybe he'd like to understand what's happening up at that trailer. 
right? We're just gonna keep working on the groundwork and you're gonna see me softening on his head, changing directions. Everything we've done, I'm also, uh, for those of you at home watching this, I have my apprentice group here. So we're going through this with them at the same time. So all I'm doing is the exact same groundwork pack package that we did yesterday. And we are just bringing that back to the trailer. Now, get that shoulder away from me. Anytime you feel him crowding you, you tell him no. You don't have to do it super hard or super aggressively. Okay, right there, he actually looked to the back of the trailer. So I'm just gonna walk him right to the trailer. And here we're gonna set. We're gonna ask him to come forward and release the pressure. Pressure does not teach your horse. The release of pressure does, right? Pressure motivates the horse to look for a release. I'm gonna give him one more try to stay up here. Okay, move his feet. I use my 12 foot lead rope Sometimes it's too much, but at other times I need that much length to be able to deal with them appropriately. There we go. The rest happens with his nose in the trailer. That's where the release comes from. When he gets back out, that's perfectly okay with me right now. Don't crowd me. And he's of the opinion that he's being crowded. Okay, I don't want to crowd him. I'm not trying to rush him into the trailer. Let him take his time. Once he makes the decision that the trailer's where he wants to be, it's gonna be a lot better decision. He didn't say no. We just quietly walk away from the trailer. Even though he didn't say no, he was still trying. Why did I walk away from the trailer? Because at this point, I want him to realize how much easier the trailer is than saying no. Again, I said this a few minutes ago, but the sooner he makes this decision on his own, the happier we're both gonna be. When he decides that this trailer is actually a really good place to be, I'm not gonna have to worry about keeping him in the trailer. What I'm watching for now is for him to start looking towards the trailer. When I, right there, right there. When I see him look towards that trailer, then I'll just walk him back up to the trailer. He's so in the habit of saying no, that even when he's halfway in, there we go. No, no. That was kind of Western, right? Not really the way you want things to happen. But again, he's in the habit of being in control. We're saying no to forward movement. I can move him somewhere. Don't ever focus on what you can't do. Focus on what you can do. You can't make this horse come forward. You can't make this horse stand still in the trailer. You can move this horse's body somewhere. And in order to establish leadership, you have to move it somewhere. Now you notice I use a little dressage whip uh, in this situation, but I don't use it much. It's not to cue the horse for anything except forward movement or to move his body off of me. I want him responding to my body as we work back and forth here. He's been through the groundwork lesson. He knows what it means. All this is, is advanced level groundwork to the trailer. That's it. All we've done is made the trailer another obstacle. It's been my experience that there are only four kinds of trailers horses don't like. Old ones and new ones, big ones and small ones. Those are the only four kind that horses struggle with, right? And I promise you, if your horse is struggling with a trailer, it's one of those four kind. So we keep an older, smaller trailer here on the ranch all the time 
because my theory is if I can load them into this, I can load them into pretty much anything, right? So I want to bring him back here and let him have that chance to re relax, rest. He's got himself just kind of all fussed up. We'll just kind of keep working here. Now, we could have taken a two-man approach to this and had him in the trailer in a couple of seconds. And I'm going to show you that a little bit later. But that wouldn't have helped Kiri when she's at home by herself. I need to do something that's going to help Kiri when she's at home by herself. There we go. That's what I actually want. I want him to come to the trailer with a much quieter response. Find that chance to relax. He's gonna turn it down again, that's okay. Don't get your emotions involved. They don't belong here. This is not personal, even though it feels that way sometimes. Okay, that's perfectly all right. He came right back out just as fast as he went in. What did we ask him to do? Get in the trailer and stay there? Just get in the trailer. That's all I asked him to do. That's it. So he needs to know that was totally acceptable. Now we need to do it better, but that was totally acceptable. fast you could get in there and tie him I don't think so I don't think so but that's okay we're gonna let him just set for a second a few seconds is enough you don't have to let him set for minutes a few seconds and go right back I really want him to rest in the trailer That's not what I want perfect, but it's a lot better than what I had, right? So we're finally at a point where we can take two seconds to stand in the trailer. To me, it's critical when he finally stands still that I lead him out of that trailer. Don't leave him there so long he gets scared. Dad used to tell me, Ken, dead fish and company both stink after three days. Don't stay too long, right? When you get this horse in this trailer and you leave him there too long, he's going to panic and jump out. You can already see he's going to panic and jump out of this trailer. So <clears throat> when you get him to stand still for a couple of seconds, release him and reward him. Tell him that's enough. Good job. Good. Now, up till now, I haven't wanted to be in the trailer with him. And there's been nothing about his actions in the trailer that made me want to join him in there, 
All right, but he's getting calm enough now that I'm gonna reach a point where I'll step in with him so I can kind of help keep him straight. If we can be consistent and step up here one more time. I really want him backing out of the trailer, but I can't back him out of the trailer when I can't even get him to stay facing the front. Okay, we'll come back over here. I'm gonna step in with him. Just walk this to the front. And I'm gonna back him out. Back him out. Easy. Let him come forward. Back him out. Easy. Right there, just easy. Stop. Back him out. Easy, easy. No pressure on his head. This is a really low roof trailer. No pressure on his head, any trailer. I don't care how high the roof is. When you have your horse in the trailer, do not put pressure on his head. If he panics, his head is gonna come up. I'm not that tall and I'm hitting my head on the roof, okay? So his head is gonna come up and he's gonna whack the roof. I don't care how tall your trailer is. If you have a warm blood trailer, Horse comes up high enough, he's gonna whack his head on the roof. And when he does, he's gonna panic and it's gonna scare him. And he's gonna get worse and worse on the trailer loading, okay? So, ideally what you're looking for is to keep him as calm and quiet in the trailer as possible. Walk him to the front. Back him out. Easy. I don't stop him with the halter. I stop him with my voice. I stop him with my body. Easy. Don't pull on the halter. Just stop your body right at the back of the trailer. Let him come to that point. Every now and then I run into somebody who says, well, I, I just don't back my horse out of the trailer. Well, honestly, sometimes you end up in a trailer where you have to back out, or sometimes you have a situation where it's much safer to back out. So I, ha I use a stock trailer a lot, and lots of times I don't back out. But I want every horse to know how to back out of that trailer. It's critical to me that every horse knows how to back out of that trailer. And when I'm backing him out, I start, the first time you saw me, I backed him up, took him forward, backed him up, took him forward, stop him part way, and then back him the rest of the way, stop him at the back, back door where he knows, get him in the habit of knowing the next thing we're gonna do is step out of this trailer, okay? Let him sit here for a minute. He needs to understand it's okay to stay right here. It's okay to just sit here and rest. This is a good place to be. Now back out. Now, okay, any questions? Yes, uh, how do you keep his head facing forward without putting any pressure on his head? Okay, so what I'm doing, Larry, is we're taking all the groundwork we did yesterday. Okay, I, I, I don't, I try to never teach trailer loading without first teaching all of the groundwork, okay? So in the groundwork, this horse learned to step away from my body when I step in. I reinforced that in all the groundwork that we did out here. Every time I stepped towards him, he stepped away. So now, when we, go, when we come into the trailer, I step in with him and walk parallel with him to the front of the trailer. And that way, he's not gonna... Back out. Back out. Easy. So it's really not any different at that point than it would be if I, say, walked with him right here. Okay? Anywhere that I walk with him, if I walk straight towards you, 
I send him there and then I walk with him. Okay, and that keeps him straight. Now you notice I did not get in that trailer with him until he started settling down. That's a death trap. I know as many people that have been hurt in there as any place out with horses. That's, so I don't get in there until he's willing to be calm. And then once he's willing to be calm, I start stepping in with him and walk to the front, right? And if this trailer had dividers, we would walk him up and put him in place there. Here, it's kind of an open stock type, so we're not doing that. But you just, you stay with him and you make sure the groundwork is already done. Respect. It's to show esteem or appreciation for others. In horsemanship, it's a key element. Without respect, it's pretty hard to get anything from your horse. And if your horse doesn't have respect for you, it's really hard to deal with them. When we come to the back door of a trailer, if a horse is lacking respect, I promise you, you're gonna find it right there. If that horse is willing to run you over, what he's telling you is, my safety, my body are far more important than yours, right? So the horse never, never comes to the back of the trailer and says, I'm gonna make you look stupid for fun. That's not what it is. It's a lack of respect. He comes to the back of the trailer and he says, listen, I'm not getting in there because I'm more important than you. My safety is my responsibility. So that's why when we start the trailer loading exercise, you start with teaching that horse the groundwork before you ever get near the trailer. When you get to the trailer, we went back and we picked up those lessons so that that horse would remember, watch out, don't step on the trainer because I need to respect him and where he's at. Trailer loading is a really good example of what happens in our personal lives. Let's say, let's talk about an employee or a kid. We ask them to do something and they kind of, oh, I don't want to. How you deal with that next is going to determine whether it's a respectful issue or not. If you come at them and you lose your temper and you're angry and you tell them you do it because I told you to do it, you're also not showing them any respect. If we don't show respect to others, it's very, very difficult for them to then in turn respect us. If you want to be respected, you have to be respectful, right? And being respectful is not just respecting others, it's acting respectful within yourself. It's understanding that you can't just lose self-control. It's hard to have great character if you're only having one character trait. Actually, the way it works is all of these character traits come together and they all complement one after the other. Thank you so much for joining the show today. I'm looking forward to next week's show. Next week, we're gonna bring Kiri back and help her figure out how she can help her horse load in and out of the trailer. Remember to tune in next week, and until then, may God bless the trails you ride. Find out more about Ken McNabb horsemanship at kenmcnabb.com. That one true horse, the perfect partner built to ride. Cannot be denied You would search forever Just to have the chance To take a ride on one